Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we got a sub battle up against Vikings now. As you can see, subs this week, it's 0-0, zero to zero, but we're not only going to take down Minnesota on Sunday in the second preseason game for the Silver and Black, we're also going to take down Vikings now on YouTube. So we need more subs than them. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Before we get into today's news and trade rumors around Josh Jacobs and Kareem Hunt, today's show is presented by our awesome friends over at Manscaped. It is hot as balls out here, at least it is in Texas, and I want to make sure that your balls are looking great and smelling great as well. The easiest way to ensure that is by going to manscaped.com. Make sure you use promo code Raiders to save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. Now, some of the stories that you're going to see today are trending in terms of overall trade rumors we will talk about Jacobs Kareem Hunt and then at the very end of today's show I will walk you through all the training camp news and notes that you need to know so let's talk about the latest going on around star running back number 28 Josh Jacobs I told y'all yesterday and I told y'all literally right after the Raiders game against the Jags that there's a lot of people out there really overblowing and trying to push this trade narrative even though they got blue check marks out there you can't always believe what you see I said that McDaniels just wants to see what type of running back he is that's all it is wanted to get him more reps and today he confirmed that the Raiders are not trading Josh Jacobs some of the reasons that I illustrated earlier in the week I'm going to go through them a little bit more here in depth the reasons why you do not move on from number 28 you're in win now mode. The last time we see, saw McDaniels as a head coach in the AFC West, he had a record of 11 and 17. The fact that Las Vegas made the playoffs last season, the fact that the Raiders have, had a, have never had a losing season in Las Vegas, considering the fact of everything that happened last season, if this team doesn't make the playoffs, it's a fail on McDaniels and it's egg on his face. You are in win now mode. The next reason here, I get the fact that they declined his fifth-year option, and I think that this is going to be Jacobs' final season with the Raiders. But $2.12 million for a running back that's going to go out there and try to prove it to get a big payday, that's essentially a one-year prove-it deal at $2.12 million for Josh Jacobs, a running back that has legit top 10, top 5 upside. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. When you look at some of his numbers throughout his entire career, I understand that he had a bit of a down year. But how many people think it was because of Josh Jacobs? No, it was the offensive line. He showed his physicality. And when you give this man open running lanes, he is one of the better backs in the NFL. Here's the other reason. You got to keep your running backs fresh. If I learn one thing... The RB unit is going to be used heavily in McDaniels' Bo Hart agrees offense, whether that's via screens, whether that's running the football. If you want to make a deep playoff run, you got to make sure that your offense is healthy. How do you ensure that? Here you go, Brandon Bolden. Here you go, Zamir White. Here you go, Kenyon Drake. Here you go, Josh Jacobs. Keep your backs healthy for that late stretch. And then you're going to get a comp pick in 2023. I did see a few people out there throwing out the third round comp pick. That's not going to happen. You guys got to remember, comp picks are based on how much money that player ends up going for. So, for example, third round comp pick, you're looking at like $17 million a year because that's essentially what Christian Kirk got. The running back market, I would say if you can get a fifth round pick for him next year in terms of a comp, that's pretty good. That's what Zay Jones went for and he made about $10 million a year. But then Chase Edmonds got a sixth round comp and he got about 6.5. So I think for Jacobs next year, the Raiders get a fifth, potentially a sixth round comp pick. So here's the thing, man. These Raiders beat writers out here I'm sorry, I'm done following them, and I think y'all should be done with them too. They got no idea. If you want to actually get good Raiders content out there, go to the YouTubers out there. They are covering this team way better than anybody else out there on Twitter. They're the people that were telling you that it was 
Jim Harbaugh was the front runner. It's Patrick, uh, Brandon Parker's job to lose. Raiders are never going to trade for Devontae Adams. I'm sick and tired of looking at their reports. I'm going to crumble them up, throwing them in the garbage, because as far as I'm concerned, they have zero idea what's going on. And the fact that they were pushing this narrative that Jacobs was out there to get traded even shows me more that they're losing this battle up against a lot of YouTubers out there, and the only way that they can compete is make up bullshit like this. So what I want you to do right now is show Jacobs some love. If you've watched the show, I have made my point very clear. I do not believe in paying running backs, but I've said that he's going to be the back on this team. So spam those 28s down in the comment section right now. Next story coming up here on the Raiders Report by Chat Sports, presented by Manscaped, is the Raiders have been linked to Kareem Hunt. I'll talk about this rumor because it is from a, I'm going to use air quotes here, credible Twitter source with over 100,000 followers, and I'll get into that in all a second, but here's the thing, y'all. With the summertime being here, it's literally the most important time to make sure that your balls are looking absolutely spectacular. Studies have shown that women care more about the way that you smell than the way you look. So if you do get lucky enough to get into that situation and she's down there and it's like, oh man, what is going on? It's not going to be a good thing for you. So let Manscaped take care of your balls. Get rid of that bush down there. Make sure it's silky, smooth, and clean because it's going to be less stanky. So use code Raiders at manscaped.com to get 20% off, get free shipping, get your hands on the lawnmower 4.0. That way, well, maybe you should get your hands on something of yours, and then you can keep on plowing on. Let's talk about Kareem Hunt to the Raiders. According to NFL Rooms on Twitter, the Raiders are a team to watch for Hunt if the Browns let him become available. If you stay up to date on the latest news and rumors going on around just the NFL in general, Kareem Hunt has asked for a trade. The Browns have declined that trade. But... Let's just hypothetically say Kareem Hunt gets approved to get dealt. Do you think the Raiders would be interested in trading for the Cleveland Browns second string running back? If you do, type Y for yes. If you don't, type your N for no. In terms of my show here, Kareem Hunt trade to the Raiders, this one is zero just win, babies. It's tuck rule, tuck that. I get what has been out there. I get that people like to look at NFL rooms, but to me, it's kind of lazy analysis. Why? I think literally the only thing that they did was they saw the rumors around Josh Jacobs, and then they tied it into the Raiders. They also know Raiders are passionate people, and that tweet is going viral. Hunt is asked to be dealt. If the Raiders were to make this deal, you would owe him $6.25 million. Not only does it not make sense from a on-the-field standpoint, it doesn't make sense for a off-the-field situation either. You know what I really want minus a playoff run, minus the Raiders winning a Super Bowl? No bullshit. I, I want the concentration this year to be on the field. And if you bring Kareem Hunt in, sorry. That's extra drama off the field that I do not want to bring to Las Vegas. And I asked our Browns reporter here at Chat Sports, shout out to Matthew Peterson. I was like, what do you think Cleveland would want? He said a fourth-round pick. I give it up a fourth round pick for the second best running back. If if y'all are freaking out about the Jacobs rumors now, you trade for Hunt, give up a fourth round pick, you're going to pay him $6.25 million. Hell, use that money, invest it in other areas, and then what? He's going to be behind Jacobs, split work with Brandon Bolden, maybe mix it in with Kenyon Drake because you restructured his contract, and then Samir White. It just doesn't make sense. Hunt is a talented back. When he was first coming out at Toledo, that rookie season with Kansas City, eight touchdowns, 1,300 yards, it was impressive. But you know what also I see last season? Injuries. And he got banged up a little bit, and that's okay. Now, Cleveland also has the best offensive line, or at least I'll say had the best offensive line last season, which absolutely benefited Kareem Hunt. It absolutely benefited Nick Chubb. The Raiders do not have nearly the talent that the Browns do, so I wouldn't expect the exact same production. The next reason here is this. The Raiders have depth at running back. We saw that. Like, I get it was a preseason game, but from top to bottom, were y'all not impressed by that running back room for the Raiders? Jacobs looked fresh. I loved what I saw out of Zamir White, 11 carries for 52 yards. Brandon Bolden didn't get in the game. Amir Abdullah found the end zone. Hell, Austin Walter had eight carries for 49 yards. He even looked good. Now, sure, 
those players aren't going to make the team. But we have enough, enough running back depth right now to get through the season. So I'm going to say no to Kareem Hunt. I got two more reasons why it doesn't make sense. But if you haven't already followed me on Instagram or Twitter, you better get with it. Because I've been having these hot takes all weekend. And some of y'all didn't see them. And it's okay. But it's also really important during this regular season that you don't always follow the people who have that blue check mark. Because just because they have it doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. 6.25 million, too much for an RB2. I kind of already went into depth in this a little bit more, but if you got 6.25 million to spend on Kareem Hunt, sounds like something Gruden might try to do. I would rather invest that in the right tackle spot, maybe get some extra defenders out there, or who knows, a defensive tackle like Indomitian Sue. The final reason here is the Raiders, Mark Davis, have a zero tolerance for domestic violence. The reason why Kareem Hunt is no longer a member of the Kansas City Chiefs is because, well, he had an altercation. There's video footage out there of him abusing his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. And Mark Davis, back in 2018, Raiders player, had a issue as well with domestic violence. And this is what Mark Davis had to say. We have zero tolerance to make it more Raiders-like. Let's say double zero tolerance like Jim Otto's number. I'll lead by example. I'll continue to speak if someone asks. I think this is a very, very serious situation, but the thing I can deal with is our organization. It's just something we can't tolerate. I don't know how to fix it in society, but I know we can't have it on our team. The reason why the Raiders have a zero tolerance policy, you can say what you want about Mark Davis. He's a good human being. The Raiders have always, throughout their entire history, it doesn't matter if you're a male, if you're a female, age, race, does not matter. If you're good, you get a shot. But then also he gives chances. And for those of you that don't know the final backstory, Tracy, please uh, spam Tracy down in the comments. Fred Belindikoff's daughter, Tracy Belindikoff, was murdered you know, a little over 20 years ago in a domestic violence situation. I think all Mark is doing here is having his players back, showing the nation that, yes, winning football games is important, but there are some things in life that are bigger than football. And if you trade for Kareem Hunt, you go against everything that you say. And I don't think that Mark Davis is that type of guy. So what I want you guys to do, never forget Tracy Belindikoff. Never forget everyone out there who's ever been in a situation. If you need help with domestic violence, there's plenty of opportunities out there to reach out. So spam Tracy to show some love and respect right now. Coming up next here on the show, let's get into some training camp news and rumors. My DMs have been filled up over the weekend around two players, Darren Waller and... Chandler Jones. Luckily, we did get an update today around Jones. He was out there practicing. He missed four straight practices before the Raiders preseason game. Obviously did not suit up against the Jacks either, but the fact that he's out there is a good sign. Some other practice updates here. Roger Teamer Jr., he was back out there, which that hasn't happened since like the very, very first week of training camp. Extra depth at safety. That makes me happy. Running back Britton Brown, he was at practice today. He's missed a little over a week. Amik Robertson was a player that I had very high hopes for. Looked good early on. Got banged up a little bit. I'm hoping we see him out there up against the Minnesota Vikings. In terms of Darren Waller, I don't have an update on him. I haven't really seen anything around a injury. I've tried to make a few calls. The people who I usually talk to, they didn't know anything on Waller. I don't know if it's a contract situation. Josh McDaniels, the head coach, spoke today, and not even him. He couldn't provide an update on Waller. Now, remember, y'all, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please make sure you do so. In terms of some other things to keep in mind, Rocky Sin, Anthony Averett, Craven LeBlanc, they weren't at practice today. I really don't think that that's that big of a deal. I think it's a little bit more of a let's heal up a little bit. Divine Diablo wasn't out there. Brandon Parker, probably for the best. Cleveland Furl, Jacob Hollister, Alex Barr is not out there. The wide receivers, from what I understand, have looked better today up against the corners, but that's because some of your number one corners aren't out there. If anything else changes, if anything else happens, I will keep you guys up to date but seriously, make sure you got those notifications turned on because I got a gut feeling the Raiders are going to be making some moves. Not this week, maybe, but over the next two weeks or so, the Raiders are going to be making some moves to potentially bring in a veteran, whether that be on the offensive line, but especially on the defense.